Hi YouTube, I'm Alicia Souza and I'm an illustrator. My Skillshare class just launched and it's about finding inspiration and illustrating for merchandise. Today I'm sharing an exclusive sneak peek with you. Stay tuned. I just scanned my illustration. I scan it usually at 400 dpi, so that's a high enough resolution for me to print for something like a mug. Always scan at a high resolution because you never know what you want to use it for later as well. So if I want to use the same illustration on, say, something a little bigger, I'd want um, something that's high resolution so that I won't get, of course, any pixelation when I print. All right, so I'm opening it on Photoshop. So that's how it looks. Here is a bunch of stamps that my nephew stamped on my <laughs> book. Here are the line marks that I made, uh, as I mentioned. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up. So I'm just cropping the edges out and I'm going to increase exposure just to clean out the back parts. I use a lot of shortcuts. I'm not going to even get into what shortcuts I use because I edit some of them. So I'm not sure which ones I edited. You can go into preferences and you can change your shortcuts. And I always, always recommend it because it makes your workflow so much more fast, so much more faster. I recommend making a shortcut that works for your hands and yeah, always, always work for them. So here I'm going to take out the line art. You can probably hear Ollie making little noises in the background. Please excuse. Um, and here on the top, top are stamps that my nephews uh, stamped on my book. I'm just going to delete that out. I'm going to take out these um, line, these marks, and I'm going to keep them on separately and just make them disappear. And I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to color on this artwork, but because these are separate icons, I'm going to move them according to the canvas of the mug in this case. Um, ideally, you can even start a canvas that is perfectly two sides and move it there. So I'm just going to work a little backwards in this case. Okay, so I'm going to color on a layer below the lined artwork. And I'm just going to use random colors today. I don't really have a palette. I'm just going to use the pal palette that's up here. I've been using Kyle Webster's brushes for ages, but now it comes uh, with Photoshop uh, and Adobe CC. So uh, that's free for you if you have that subscription. This is like a brush that I like, and I'm just going to use this one. This is where you can have fun and you can like color in how you like with whatever brushes that you like. And um, there's no real hard and fast rules with this bit. So when I started, I used to use literally every color in the palette. Now I just use a limited color palette. Again, no hard and fast rules. Uh, you can use what you like or what works for the artwork or for the brief. But I realized that a lot of illustrators end up having a color palette that um, is kind of innate to them and what they seem to like aesthetically. And mine seems to be a little more brighter on the brighter side. I, I love bright colors, so it's just what I use and I feel like it goes with my surroundings. So now I'm just picking up pretty much colors at random. As I go from bug to bug, I will clean up, you know, bits of it. And I'm trying to do one bug at a time just to show you um, how it looks, but I'm going to color everything also. How I work is I tend to color everything, then I add in the details a bit later, and then like the shadows, and then the texture and stuff like that. I play with opacity as well. For certain places, it's just easier to work with it. So you can always make your own texture. I always, of course, um, I recommend it because then you get something that's super unique to your own artwork and to what you do. I'm probably going to add those uh, concentric circles and add them to his wings. Uh, that's more of a pattern than a texture, but I, I think even say you make marks with a pen that's running out of ink and you use that, I think that looks so beautiful. And then you always, you can keep these textures and use them and keep them in a separate folder and use them for other illustrations as well. Pull this out. So I'm going to take two of these and I'm going to put them, color them white. I'm going to move them here. So now they look like little patterns on his wings. Um, I'll do it with the other side as well. I think I did four of them, so it's perfect. 
And also a good rule of thumb is naming your layers, which I never do. It's quite terrible, but always recommend it to, to name your layers. Um, I do recommend, I mean, I do it when I send it for print, of course, but before that, I sometimes don't. I kind of know how I work with my files, so I don't, but if it's bigger files, of course, I, I do. Um, and, then, and I think this guy is kind of done. And I'm just going to do the rest of them. Also, one thing you have to keep in mind when you're working with merchandise is firstly, of course, your resolution. Secondly, is the color format. So uh, it's usually CMYK for print and uh, color separation. So if you're working with something like screen printing, so if you're doing a t-shirt or uh, something that is going to get screen printed, there'll be a limit on number of colors. And if they need the colors separated in different layers or different files, that's just something to keep in mind before you start working. Now, I know I'm going to be working on digitally printed mug, so there's going to be no color restrictions, but I will have to keep in mind how the color is going to turn out when it finally gets printed on the mug. Uh, I will see that in the sample. Certain things look duller when they're printed, certain things look as, as on screen, um, so that's usually paper. Um, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. Thanks for joining me for this lesson. I can't wait to see what you've made. This is one part of my class for finding inspiration and illustrating for merchandise on Skillshare. Click on the link below. I can't wait to see you there.